Tonight we are talking about calories versus macros. What the heck is the difference? I know for most of us ladies, we've been counting calories for a really long time. Maybe in the last few years heard a little bit about macros, but I'm going to dive in deep, talk about calories versus macros, what we should really be paying attention to, what each of those macros mean, meaning your protein, your carbs, and your fats, and kind of how to apply that to your real life. So if you're new here, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Renee Paulson. I am a recovering food and sugar addict, but also a healthy living and nutrition coach. Um, I struggled with food and sugar addiction hardcore for most of my life, ending up actually consuming an average of three cups of sugar every single day. Now you might be like, holy smokes, that sounds like a lot. And it is a lot. It really is a lot. But when you're talking about the American diet and the Western diet, it's actually a really easy thing to do, especially if you drink soda. So that I drink a two liter of Coca-Cola every single day. I never drink water. And I really just kind of grew up with really poor eating habits. And honestly, I tried to lose weight before. I always like wanted to lose weight. Like that was my plan, but never knew how to go about it. And even tracking calories, I was just like, ah, oh, that sounds really bad and hard. Uh, I did do Weight Watchers when I was like in my 20s because Weight Watchers, you can eat whatever you want and you, as long as you count your points. <laughs> so it, um, it appealed to me. But if you love Weight Watchers, I hate to tell you that Weight Watchers is owned by Kraft. It's also owned by Philip Morris, AKA Big Tobacco. They are designed to really help keep you addicted to food uh, because it keeps money in their pockets. So if you do Weight Watchers and you really love it, I'm sorry. I'm not against, totally against Weight Watchers. I just don't think that it works in the long term to teach you healthy food choices, to be honest. Um, but I really want to talk today about calories versus macros and tracking your food. Um, and I use an app called Chronometer. Now, there is a free version of this app. You can look it up. It's like Chronometer. I think it has like a target. Maybe I'll put the what it looks like in the comments on like the app store so you can really see they have a free version, they have a paid version. Um, you can do any of in between. I usually have all of my clients do chronometer period because then I can go in and kind of look at everything that they're doing and tracking and it makes it really easy. No, I'm not getting paid to tell you about chronometer. I really wish that I was, but <laughs> I'm not that fancy schmancy yet. Um, I will tell you, however, though, when I was talking about tracking food, my husband talked to me about this so long ago, like tracking your food. If you're wanting to lose weight, you really need to do that. And I was just like, that sounds awful. And I don't want to do it at all. It sounded horrible weighing your food and the whole shebang and figuring out an app. And it sounded really, really restrictive to me. Now, part of that kind of fear of tracking my food really came from food and sugar addiction because you don't want to see what's going in. And so when you start tracking your food, really it kind of lays it out black and white. Unless you're like lying to yourself on tracking your food, which kind of like there's no point in doing that. Um, but when you start to really track your food, you're like, ooh, whoa, okay, I can see like a few things here and there. Now, I know there's a lot of other apps like MyFitnessPal and there's another one, My Macros maybe. I did try to use My Macros and my fitness pal. The reason that I really love Chronometer is that it not only tracks your macronutrients, meaning your protein, carbs, and fat, um, but it also tracks your micronutrients, all your vitamins, your minerals, even breaks down the proteins, breaks down the fats, breaks down the carbs. It goes into tracking your sugars. It shows you your omega-3 and your omega-6 balance. So it's really helpful, especially when you're recovering from food and sugar addiction because it puts the nutritional value of food like right up in your face. So if you are, you know, eating what you think is healthy, it could really be very unbalanced. Now I'm also going to link another video in the comments here where I have dived into how I track my own chronometer or excuse me, my own food in chronometer and really balance a meal. Uh, so I'm going to put that in the comments, but I really want to go through chronometer and, and talk about calories versus macros, especially as ladies, when we talk about wanting to lose weight, a lot of us think, okay, we need to cut calories. We need to cut calories and really pay attention to those calories. And while yes, calories are important because obviously in order to lose weight, you need to be in a calorie deficit. 
Now, a very common trend that I find with ladies is that we are chronically under eating, like trying to eat less than 1200 calories a day. And honey, let me tell you that that ain't going to work. It might work in the short term, but in the end, it's really what ends up happening when you chronically eat 1200 calories or less. Physiological changes happen in the brain and your body. And they happen on a you know consistent basis, depending on where you're at in that process. After a few days, you end up with this thing where um, your body's trying to trick you into eating more. So food, if you've ever noticed going on a diet, maybe like two, three days in, food starts to look better and smell better, and you could smell the restaurant from like three blocks down. That is not all in your head. That is literally what is happening. Your body is like, excuse me, you're starving me and I'm hungry, so I'm going to trick you into eating because I feel like you're starving me. <laughs> so you end up in that. After 30 days, you can hit something called eating induced eating. Now, these are not all the changes. These are just a few that I'm naming. But if you've ever gone to say, well, I'll just have maybe a bite of that cake or a bite of whatever, French fries or whatever it is, um, and you really intend to maybe just have a little bit, and then pretty soon before you know it, the whole freaking plate is gone, that is considered eating-induced eating. It's where your body literally will not let you stop eating. <laughs> You're just like... And your body kind of like takes over for you and you hoover the whole thing and at the end of it you're like i didn't want to eat that much um and then even after three months of eating 1200 calories or less a day you can enter or you can get into clinical depression um it also starts to alter your hormones and all sorts of shebang bang things that like you really don't want to mess with so this is why eating enough calories a day is very important so yes, you want to look at calories and make sure, like I said, if you're trying to lose weight, you want to make sure you're in a calorie deficit. Um, that doesn't mean like eat whatever you want or eat partially whatever you want and then try and punish yourself in the gym or working out to try and lose that weight. Really, when it comes to health and weight loss, you're looking at about 80% of that is food. So what's going in is exactly what's going to come out. And 20% is working out. Working out, yes, very important, um, but mostly important for your mindset and your mental health, if you want me to be real about that. And the biggest tool that working out does as far as influencing your eating and helping you lose weight is that studies have shown that when you work out, you actually make better food choices throughout the day because you worked out. Now, I struggled with this for a long time because I would work out really late at night when the, you know, when my kids were really little, um, I would work out late at night because like, that's the only time I could work out. And then, um, ironically, I would not snack at night. Uh, I was a huge nighttime snacker. So if I did work out at night, I wouldn't snack at night. So I guess that is the good food choice, but that's why working out People always say, oh, you should work out first thing in the morning. You should work out in the afternoon. You should work out here. You, you know when you should work out? When you have the freaking time to work out, okay? And I'm not saying when you have the time, but you need to make the time. But also, like, if you're, if you're a busy mom and you're working and you can't get into the gym until 6 o'clock at night, that's what it is. Work out then. But then maybe that'll help you with your late night snacking, things like that. So working out really helps with those food choices. But as far as calorie intake, that is different for everybody. It's going to be different for your age. It's going to be different for your height, for your activity level, and all of those things um, as far as like your calorie range. So when people are like, well, how many calories should, be, should I be eating? I'm like, well, if you were my client, I would be able to tell you because I would be able to kind of give you that in detail look. Uh, but on a normal basis, it really kind of just averages to what you're doing, what your goals are. So if you do download the app Chronometer, which I highly recommend doing, I, I absolutely love this app. And this is going from someone who refused to track food to someone who's like, this app is so amazing because again, it shows you all of those micronutrients and it really helps you make those choices based off of what you're seeing in the food that you're eating. 
So when you go in chronometer and you want to put in like what your goals are, it will spit out a normal, you know, it'll spit out whatever generic like calorie range, but your protein, your macros, your protein, carbs, and fat. Now, when I talk about macros, like what's more important, is it calories or macros? Here's what I find is that as women, number one, we are chronically under eating. Uh, and also way, way, way under eating on protein and a lot of times under eating on carbs. Now, of course, with keto and the Atkins and the whole shebang bang with carbs, every lady that I know is kind of, I shouldn't say every lady, that's very stereotypical, but lots of women that I run across and a lot of women that I coach, we have to get over that carb fear. So we're going to discuss carbs in just a minute. But as far as your macros, again, those three major ones are your protein um, the three ones are protein, carbs, and fat. So wanting to know where you're at in those is going to be extremely helpful because if you're eating within your calorie range, but let's say you're wanting to lose weight and tone up and you're not eating, you're chronically under eating on protein, but chronically overeating on fats, which by the way is very easy to do. And it's not, it's just how our bodies are built. Our, our bodies have not evolved to not want to eat fat, and especially in the winter time, we want to pack on that shit because that's just how our bodies and our brains have been built for survival mode. So it's very easy to do, and that's really what I see for the most part across the board. As women, we have a hard time eating enough protein and definitely don't want to eat enough carbs because we think that carbs are super bad, and we watch our fats, but sometimes they can get cray-cray. So when you have something like that, and I will tell you for the first year of my weight loss journey, I did not track my food and I know that that was the case. Excuse me. I was still in a calorie deficit because I was working out at the gym um, and making sure that I was staying active, but I was chronically under eating on protein and chronically probably overeating on fat. So yes, I lost weight, but here's what, why really paying attention to those macros is important. Because yes, you can lose weight the other way. However, it can take a lot longer. You can get totally different results because if you're under eating on protein, you're not gonna tone up the way that you really want to and your body's gonna just look different. And um, you're not gonna be able to sustain that food eating lifestyle because your body is eventually gonna be like, yo, I'm tired, you're not giving me enough carbs, I feel really bad, I feel irritable, like all of those things really come into play. So when you really look at what you're eating, what I suggest is to go into Chronometer and kind of just start playing with it and just track what a regular few days of eating would be for you just to see where you're at. I, if you do this, come back to this video and comment on it because I guarantee you, like I said, I'm going to say about 95% of the women that I talk to are under eating on protein because it's kind of, it's difficult to get all that protein in that we need to build muscle. So you, if you go in chronometer and you put in your stuff, it will spit out kind of like a range for kind of what you want to do. I usually find that it's a little under and if you do work one-on-one -on -one with me, I give custom macros to all of my clients and teach them how to balance a meal and really look at the nutrients and what you want to do. Now, as far as those macros, what are they going to do? Protein is not only going to help you build muscle, which let me just stop right there for one second, because I know a lot of women are like, I don't want to be a muscle man. You have to eat an insane amount of protein to be like a bodybuilder or a female bodybuilder. Like it's not going to happen overnight, first of all. So Protein, extremely important. And for the most part, most people have to supplement with a protein shake. I know that I have to supplement with a protein shake. Um, it is because I do eat mostly plant-based, especially during the week. So if you're trying to be mostly plant-based, protein shakes are going to be a supplement for you in just regular life. That way you can get all that food in. So the protein is going to help you build that muscle to tone up, but also by building that muscle in your body, it's also going to increase your metabolic rate and really help burn that fat. But also it's going to help keep you satisfied through until the next meal. So comment below if you've ever had a meal, right? And then 
let's say maybe it's breakfast and then you get to maybe 10 30 11 o'clock I feel sweaty it's hot <laughs> 10 30 11 o'clock and you're like I am hangry like I'm starving it's not even lunchtime like what is going on my breakfast should have satisfied me um let's say maybe whatever you had a bowl of oatmeal and fruit or whatever it is which isn't a bad breakfast but if you don't have enough protein in there then you're gonna get hungry it's not gonna satisfy you and keep you through to that that next meal now also then again if you go switch to the carbs the carbs are going to give you the energy that you need to get through your day to get through to that next meal now as far as carbs there's two different ranges of carbs there's complex carbs and there's simple carbs the simple carbs are the ones that you really want to watch out for because carbs get a bad rap, but really you need carbs in your life. Like carbs are not bad. They're your friend. You can lose weight and still eat carbs. It's going to be amazing. I know and you're going to love it. But the carbs that you want to look out for, like not look out for, but the carbs that you really want to ingest, that sounded weird, ingest, um, that you want to eat would be like your sweet potato, uh, brown rice, brown basmati rice has the lowest glycemic index. So I love brown basmati rice. Something is going in Colorado though right now. Something's going on because I can't get brown basmati rice for the last two weeks here. I'm not sure. Um, but brown rice is going to be a great one. Uh, did I say sweet potatoes, your quinoa, really those hearty grains that are going to help sustain you through and give you that energy that you need throughout your meal, uh, throughout your day, like your oats, things like that. Um, the simple carbs, that's going to be when you take anything that is like a sugar, like sugars break down into simple carbs in the body. So that's really what, what kind of spikes up that insulin response. So you're looking at your cake, cookies, um, <laughs> you know, those potato chips, the white potatoes, white rice, all of those things are going to be simple carbs they are going to shoot up your insulin response and really go into the into the liver that can be you know go into fatty liver disease and things like that all sorts of things that we we kind of want to stay away from so simple carbs are great but like in very very close moderation especially if you're in trying to lose weight or hit some type of health goal those simple carbs really have to be something that are maybe like a once a week or a very once in a while type of deal especially if you're pre-diabetic you really want to watch those and then your fats are going to kind of help keep you sat, you know, satiated throughout the day. Our body loves fat, um, the, but we really want to focus on the good and the right kinds of fats, like your avocados, um, nuts and seeds, those types of things, rather than getting your fat from, you know, fried food. <laughs> those those types of oils are going to be um, really inflammatory. So you really want to focus on having that balance. Now, when you go in chronometer, and you'll see um, in the video that I have attached in the comments here, that it will show you a percentage. When you go in and you're trying to track your food, when you find that it's really off balance is when you can feel really hungry in the middle of the day, um, nauseous, have that two or three o'clock slump where you're just like, Ugh, you know, I, I can't even make it through the rest of the day. Those types of things are going to show you that that those meals that you're having really are probably unbalanced. So what I really like to do is to go into chronometer and let's take breakfast for example. Um, a breakfast would be, let's say a good balanced breakfast. You want to have around 30 to 33-ish percent of your protein for the day, 30 to 33-ish percent of your carbs. Now I say 30 to 33-ish because you want it to be about, if you're having three meals a day, you want it to be about a third of what you're eating. Now, I don't know about you, but I am a snacker and I will not give up snacks <laughs> for anything or anybody. Uh, I don't know about you, but that's just how I feel. So I like to build in snacks to kind of fill in a little bit, not a huge amount of snacks, but if I'm having my breakfast that's at like, let's say 31% of my protein, carbs, and fat for that meal, and then I do the same thing for lunch, and then I do the same thing for dinner, then I have some wiggle room for some snacks. I could have some, you know, I could have some carrots and hummus. I could have some Annie's Cheddar Squares. Those, I love those Annie Cheddar Squares because 
it kind of it makes you feel like you're eating something bad and it's really not that bad for you I mean yeah if you ate the whole entire box that's gonna be a problem but if you're filling in like I said if you're tracking through chronometer I highly recommend weighing out your food with a food scale just because it's a lot more accurate and it takes that guessing game out of it and weighing out weighing them out in a little bowl or a ramekin bowl and taking your bowl separate putting the box away and then having your little snack um, and I'll do that with maybe a piece of cheese or then some fruit later on and some carrots and some hummus or whatever I can fill in to then hit all of my macros. Now, as far as when I am tracking um, and how I also coach my clients, if looking at calories versus macros, if you're working out and you're trying to stay consistent and you're really trying to hit health goals, then hitting those macros, excuse me, <clears throat> are gonna be more important in looking at those versus calories. And here's why. Because as a society, and especially us ladies, we have been brainwashed to always look at calories and cut your calories and calories, 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 instead of really looking at how you're supposed to feed your body to fuel yourself throughout the day to make you feel good. So taking that calorie range out of it and just just kind of turning that blind eye to the calorie range. Now, if you're looking at hitting your macros and you hit your macros, and let's say you're at 99% on your protein, carbs, and fat for the day, your calorie range is not gonna be crazy over. It's not gonna be like, whoa, I went over on my calories by like 400 calories today because Renee told me I had to hit all my protein, carbs, and fat. They're gonna be roughly around the same, they should be around the same range. So really, when you, Focus on taking that focus from looking at calories only and really take it as my protein, carbs, and fat. Here's what I need to fuel my body. Here's what I need to fuel my brain. Here's how I need to sustain myself throughout the day. This is a huge tool when you're trying to recover from food and sugar addiction because, again, it takes that focus out of looking at those calories and really trying to focus on that losing weight and cutting those calories. And I don't know about you, but when in the past I have only looked at calories, I am trying to skimp out as little as possible. So if I, if I said, oh, if I got 1600 calories a day and I'm only looking at calories and be like, oh, I only ate 1300 calories today, that's a huge deficit and I'm gonna lose weight faster, it's gonna be great. Yes, you're going to be in a bigger calorie deficit. However, again, if you have certain health goals or you're trying to tone up or you're trying to um, have your body look a certain way or, you know, whatever it is, then cutting those calories is going to cut your body short. If your body's like, I need protein and now I have to eat myself and, and I can't grow any muscle, then that's not going to help you in the long run. It's only going to shortchange you and end up with you being more frustrated because at, if, the, if you consistently try and keep those calories cut and you're not fueling your body properly, um, a couple things can happen. Number one, you can go hangry and fall off and go ham because you have consistently, you know, starved your body from nutrients that it needs. So your body is then going to fight you back and be like, ha, 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 I'm taking over this bitch now. So that's, you know, you can go totally off range. Uh, a lot of times I will see that that will happen on the weekends, that Monday through Friday will track really good. And then, and then the weekend comes and we're like, well, I cut calories so much this week that I deserve to have this, this, this. And then we go totally off the rails. And then we're like, oh, now I need to get back on track. So it really produces that all or nothing mentality, which can be very detrimental because it shouldn't be all or nothing. Again, this isn't a diet. This is something that is a lifestyle change. Um, I will tell you that I track my food now. I do not do uh, tracking my food 100% of the time. I'm not perfectly perfect at it. And that's okay. As long as I'm looking at 80% of the time that I'm tracking my food and know where I'm at, I feel pretty good about that. Now, if I start to run into things like I'm chronically hungry, my hair starts to fall out, I don't have energy, I get really irritable, and 
I'm like, well, what's going on? I always go back and look at what I've been tracking my food. What is going on there? Oh, I didn't have enough protein yesterday. That's why I'm really hangry and cranky. You know, things like that. So it really helps look at how you're fueling your body, if you're fueling your body properly to make it through your, your real life, your work, your kids, your workout, getting the kids to bed, getting someone to soccer practice, doing this, doing that, being superwoman like we all are and taking care of everybody else. But again, you cannot take, what is that? There's a freaking Instagram reel right now. You cannot pour from an empty cup. <sighs> no, you can't pour from an empty cup. You have got to take care of yourself first before you can then take care of everybody else. Now, looking at tracking your food as just self-care. I need to make sure that I have enough energy so that I don't lose my shit later and get exhausted and have to go to bed with a headache or, or try and tough through the rest of the day and just feel yucky. So really looking at those macronutrients. And then once you kind of get into that, the fun part, and I know this might be fun because I sound like a nerd, but it, that's, it is what it is. That, that the great part with that is then you can go and look at those micronutrients. So once you hit the stage where you kind of like started tracking your food and you really get in there and you are kind of working in through comfortable in there, then you start to look at those macro, excuse me, your micronutrients. This is where I found that I was chronically deficient in iron and calcium and something else. I wanna say, I wanna say potassium. Um, also another thing that I find uh, in general, across the board with ladies and probably men too, I'm sure, is that we're not taking a multivitamin. And if you're not taking a multivitamin right now, girl, I will tell you that my mom used to freaking lecture me all the time. You need to take your vitamins. And I never listened. And I was just like, mom, you don't know what you're talking about. And then my husband was like, you need to take your vitamins. And I was like, you don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> with us warrior women we don't like to listen to nobody we just listen to ourselves so it wasn't until I started tracking my own food and looking like oh I am I am vitamin deficient like this is not good this might be why I feel like this or I feel like that and so you can really start to look at those micronutrients and see where you're deficient and see if you need to either supplement or you need to eat more food now <clears throat> I will tell you the difference between I'll give you an example of me versus my husband when we track our food. I must take my multivitamin, period, end of story, and usually I take a calcium supplement on top of that as well as an omega-3 supplement. That's because with my calorie range, and I don't have that little calorie range. I'm at like 1,700 calories a day, and that's just because I'm not fully lifting right now. So my calorie range is going to go up uh, very shortly. But with that, I still cannot, even if I'm eating super clean, whole food, plant-based, I cannot hit all of those micronutrients. My husband, on the other hand, he can, but he's also eating like 3,200 calories a day. So there's a huge difference between men and women. And women, we need to supplement with a multivitamin. I'm going to put that as a stance on there, period. Uh, I take... A multivitamin that is uh, sold through Naked Nutrition. If you're curious, I will put a link um, to my website for all my favorite things that I, you know, right on there. It'll show you exactly the vitamins that I take. Uh, that I take those every day. I've been taking those for um, the, specifically the Naked Nutrition ones. I've been taking those for about mm, I want to say about four months now, around four months. And before that, I just had a regular multivitamin that was on Amazon. I can't remember the name of it. I'll post a link here. Um, and honestly, does it matter where you get your vitamins from? Yes. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And that's because the supplement industry is not regulated, so you really need to make sure you know where you're getting your vitamins from. Is a Centrum one a day good enough? I mean, it's better than nothing, but when you're looking at multivitamins, care where they come from and care what's in them because, again, Always, what's going to go in is what's going to come out. So multivitamin, mucho, mucho, mucho importante. Like very important. If you are not having, take, having, 
if you're not taking a multivitamin right now, get on Amazon or get on Naked Nutrition and go get a multivitamin today because I can tell you that with today's food society and industry, everybody is, is vitamin deficient. So that's just the way you know that, that it is. So we all need a multivitamin to really help just fill in those gaps. And you're not gonna really see where those gaps are until you start tracking your food. Again, this is why I love Chronometer. And again, that still goes with, you're not gonna see those gaps to see how much protein you're getting or how much carbs you're getting or how much fat you're getting. If you don't track it, it's literally just a guessing game. And that guessing game can lead to so much frustration because getting to your goal could take so much longer and you could have setbacks and setbacks and, and it gets feels very frustrating um, versus when you start tracking your food and you really start paying attention to how you fuel your body and fueling your brain to make sure that you are taking care of yourself so then you can run around and be the amazing warrior woman that you are and take care of everybody else. So I hope that kind of took a little bit of mystery out of um, calories versus macros. Again, yes, calories are important because you need to be in a calorie deficit in order to lose weight. However, those macros are really going to show you um, a huge disparity. If you are stuck or you're like, I, I don't know what's going on or I feel frustrated, track that and find track it for like three days. Because then once you start tracking for three days, a lot of times you can be like, oh, okay. I see the problem. I'm at about 50% of my protein and I'm at 150% of my daily fat and like 70% of my carbs. So, you know, it's going to feel very frustrating and unbalanced. You're going to feel hangry. You're not going to have energy and it's just going to kind of like feel like schlumpy all around. So once you start tracking your food, you can look at those uh, macro and micronutrients to find where you're maybe a little bit short where you need to finagle and where you need to put some stuff in. Uh, what I also, like I said, with chronometer, if you do intermittent fasting and you're trying to do it in two meals, you can then you just put that as 50% of my meal here, 50% here. So then that sustains you and keeps you going throughout the day. So again, I hope that that information was really helpful. I love using chronometer and I exclusively use it for all of my clients because it's amazing and it gives you that snapshot of the exact nutritional value of food. So if you're like, well, great example, when someone was like, well, an egg, that, that's my protein for breakfast. If you go in chronometer and you track an egg, you're gonna find that mo a whole egg is mostly fat and like a little bit of protein. So if you're wanting to do maybe an egg and Ezekiel toast and fruit for breakfast, I still would supplement with a protein shake that is just or, or some type of other extra protein. Maybe you do egg whites, because egg whites are all protein um, for the most part, and just the yolk is really the fat part. So knowing how to balance things and finagle so that, again, you feel good throughout the day. And, and when you start to eat like that, and you start to look at tracking your food so that you feel good and you can sustain yourself throughout, throughout the day, then you're like, oh, Oh, that's why she told me to do that. Now it all makes sense. So trust me, go download Chronometer and start playing it with it for the next couple days. See how you like it. Reach out if you have any questions because I absolutely love Chronometer. It has a scanning thingy. I mean, it has so much food in there so you can run around and just scan all the things in your pantry and be like, oh, that's what I started to do is I started to scan like a lot of my snacks and then I'd be like, oh, okay, this snack is really high in fat or this, this snack is not enough protein to actually, you know, make it worth having or whatever the case is. But like I said, that's a great tool, um, not only just, yes, for weight loss, even maintaining or any type of health goals, but especially when you're trying to kind of work through food and sugar addiction and, and figure out how to start looking at food differently. Instead of looking at food as uh, satisfaction or, or joy or, or what's another word, amazingness, you know, you start to really look at it for its nutritional value. Um, I used to hear all these people, you know, I don't eat, I, I don't live to eat, I, used, I eat to live. And I used to look at those people and be like, you're fucking crazy. Like, I live to eat and I love it. 
Um, but there is a flip side to that because if you live to eat, a lot of times you're not going to live very long. Let's <laughs> just be clear about that. Um, yes, there's times when you live to eat and you go and you have those amazing treat meals. But for the most part, looking at how to really give your body the nutrition that it needs um, to sustain yourself. So, like I said, you feel good. You don't feel frustrated. You feel amazing. Maybe you're losing weight or you're maintaining your weight loss, which is also amazing. That's also very difficult to do in the end because of society and how the food and, you know, food is made and how it's readily available everywhere. So making sure that you're tracking your food, number one, super helpful tool. And looking at those macronutrients to make sure that you're fueling your body properly. I thank you so much for being here with me tonight, and I really, really appreciate you taking the time and learning about this with me. If you have any topics that you're like, hey, wait a second, I want to know about this, drop them in the comments. I am open for suggestions. I love to hear from people um, and what, what you want to know. I'm here for you, so this is what I want to know if you want to know anything. Um, next week, we're going to be covering labels and easy ways to spot added sugar in food, which is literally in everything. So we're going to dive into that next week. Other than that, I love you bunches. I hope that you have an amazing evening and I will see you later. Bye-bye.